Hi, thanks for joining us for another episode of Eye on Hako. My name is Kenta, and for today's episode, we'll be talking about maintenance, maintenance on our fume extractor and smoke absorber uh, units. Um, but before we get into that, again, uh, I'd just like to mention to everyone out there, uh, American Hako, we remain open as a part of the supply chain, um, providing products and services to the, some of the essential businesses out there uh, that are working in the medical industry, military defense, aerospace, telecommunications industries. So uh, uh, please rest assured that we will remain open. And uh, while we're doing so, uh, we are uh, doing so cautiously, um, following the guidelines set forth by the CDC, practicing social distancing, um, wearing masks inside of the office, washing our hands frequently, and staying away from the office if we're feeling sick. So uh, we're being cautious as much as we can. And I just hope that everyone out there watching this is doing the same, um, trying to stay healthy, trying to stay well, um, so we could get, all get to all um, overcome this thing together. Okay. Uh, now, like I said, today's episode is going to be on maintenance on the fume extractor and uh, smoke absorber. Um, specific, specifically, I'm going to talk about um, how to change the filters and when to change the filters on these units. And today, I'll be going over the FA400 and the FA430. Um, so let's get right into it. I have the FA400 over here on my side with the 888D. The FA400 is more of a uh, desktop, benchtop um, smoke absorber. It's meant to take away the solder smoke away from you uh, so that you're not directly in inhaling it. You can use it a couple different ways. You can use them standing up like this or you can use them horizontally laying on its side. The smoke comes in this way if you're using it horizontally. The way you use them is pretty simple. There's a power switch in the back. So you just turn the power on, the fan turns on. And if you're soldering and making some smoke, you can see that it does its job of collecting the smoke rather well. Now you want to try to keep the distance between your application and the, the fan about six to eight inches. That's like the nice distance to be at in order for the unit to catch the smoke um, properly. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and tin the tip again before I put it away. And as far as the maintenance on these uh, smoke absorbers are concerned, it's really simple. All you have to do is take the filter away grab a new one. Uh, these things do not have a front or back. Um, so you just put the new filter and put it back in its position and you're ready to go. Um, they don't have a front or back, but you just want to make sure that once you start using it at one direction, you want to make sure you keep it there. You don't want to all of a sudden, um, while you're using it, take the filter out and then reverse the side because all you're doing there then is you're, you're, you're sucking in all the dirty particles and the smoke that you, you captured into the fan. So make sure you don't do that. Um, again, really easy. Take the filter out, put a new one back in, and then turn the station back on. If you want to use it horizontally, just lay it horizontally like so. Turn on the station. Wait for it to heat up a little bit. And then you can see how the smoke gets captured from that bottom section right there. Okay. Now, you can use it two ways, but I personally like to use it uh, vertically, standing up like this, and that's for one reason. You can see as you're using it, there's going to be like a ring of uh, white residue that gets uh, captured on this filter. Um, I like to use it this way, that way you can get a visual of when you need to replace the filters. If you start to see that white residue being collected, um, that's when you can tell that you need to replace your filters. Another way you can tell uh, when you need to replace the filters is to weigh the actual uh, filter themselves. Brand new, these uh, activated carbon filters, they weigh about um, 12 grams each. After you've been using them for a while, you weigh it again. Uh, if they weigh anywhere 16 grams or more, 
then uh, that's when you know you, that the uh, filters have captured uh, the maximum amount of particles and fumes allowed. So that's when you know you need to replace them. Again, 12 grams initially. Uh, weigh it again. If it weighs 16 or more, that's when you know it's time to replace your filters for the FA400. Uh, 888D, FA400. Again, a nice uh, desktop uh, setup to be used for DIY hobbyist people um, and also for um, schools. A lot of kids use this in schools, so it's a really nice setup to be using. Um, maintenance procedure is pretty straightforward, simple. Just take out the filter and replace the new one back in. Okay? Pretty straightforward. Now, moving along to our FA430. That is, the FA430 is more of our industrial use uh, filtration system. Um, it's different from the FA400 because the FA430 has a three-stage uh, filtration process. Uh, the three stages are the pre-filter, um, and inside of the main filter there's a pleated section and there's also an activated carbon section. So in total, it creates a three-stage filtration process. Um, matter of fact, let's go ahead and put up a slide of that to give you guys a visual. Again, there's that pre-filter making the first stage. The pre-filter goes on top of the main filter and inside of the main filter there's the pleated section and there's the activated carbon section inside of the main filter. Um, and again, in total, making it a three-stage filtration process. Um, now, standard filters that the FA430 comes with, um, when used together, they're rated at 98% efficient at capturing particles that are 0.3 microns in size. Okay, so let's go ahead and give you guys a little demo of how that works. So we'll go ahead and turn on the soldering station and turn on the FA430. And now the FA430 does have uh, indicator lights that I'll show in a minute here. Um, but for now, I just want to give you guys, now it's heated up. And it's capturing the smoke, but you can tell that it's a little bit weak. And that's because I have, in the FA430, I have kind of simulated a clog to show you guys for the demo purposes how to change the filters. Okay, so I put in a clog inside of the filter. And when the pre-filters are clogged, what happens on the face of the FA430 is that you'll see there's two lights, one for pre-filter, one for main filter. And you see now that the pre-filter la lamp is uh, flashing. That's when you know you, the pre-filters are clogged up and you need to replace them. So at that point, what you want to do is turn the dial all the way to the left to the reset position. And that'll shut off the fan. And at that point, you want to open up the, the, the lid of the FA430 Check your pre-filter. Again, for demo purposes, I put in that um, illustration to simulate a clog. Now you want to fix the problem. So you want to take, remove the pre-filter. You want to, at this point, remove the dirty pre-filter. Like so. Grab a new one, obviously, and put the new pre-filter in place. And make sure you have all the corners nice and snug on top of the main filter. And now you can close the lid back up. And then turn the dial back to your original settings. And now you can see that the pre-filter lamp has gone away. Okay, so that's the procedure to change your pre-filters. Now, let's go ahead and turn the power back off. And let's go ahead and put the clog back into its position. So we simulate a clog again for demo purposes. Uh, what I want to try to show you is how to change the main filter. So we go ahead and put the clog back in place, close the lid back up, and then we turn the power back on. And give it a couple seconds. And now you see that the pre, both the pre-filter light and the main filter light has gone off. At this point, it's telling you both your pre-filter and your main filter needs to be replaced. So the procedure is kind of the same. Uh, you want to turn the dial all the way to the left to its reset position. 
that's still the same. You open up the lid, and at this point, instead of just taking out the pre-filter, since you need to replace your main filter, you remove the main filter out of its box, and make sure you completely remove the main filter because what resets the counter is that switch located at the bottom uh, corner. You wanna make sure you take that out and reset the switch. You grab a brand new main filter with a new pre-filter. Put it back in its position. Close the lid back up. And then uh, turn the dial back to your original settings. And now you can see that the la both lamps have been, are now turned off. Everything is working fine. Pre-filter is okay, main filter is okay. Okay, and at this point, let's go ahead and we will go ahead and try to solder something really quick. Just to show you the difference in the amount of smoke that it can capture. You can see compared to before, it's, ca it's catching a lot of the smoke. And obviously that's because of the restriction that it was seeing before. Before it was all clogged up. Now the pre-filters are not clogged up, so it's catching a lot of the smoke a lot better. So again, um, I see a lot of people when I'm out in the field, uh, the lights for the pre-filters, they're uh, blinking. Um, so you just want to make sure that you know you keep up with these maintenance procedures. Um, the operators may feel like the, the, the fume extractor or the smoke absorbers are not, they're not working as well as they used to. Well, let's go ahead and first uh, check the lights. Are your lights on for your FA430? If they are, check your pre-filters, check your main filters. When's the last time you checked them? Uh, you just want to make sure uh, you do these maintenance procedures to keep these tools uh, running properly so that you get the best out of, out of the performance out of these tools, um, okay? Um, so that was the maintenance procedures. Um, in, before I mentioned that for the FA430, standard filters, they have an efficiency rating when used together at 98% efficient at catching particles that are 0.3 microns, um, up to 0.3 microns. We do have a separate option available for the FA430. It is a HEPA um, rated main filter and a different pre-filter accessory available that you can um, also purchase. And when you use these sets in combination, that 98% jumps up to 99.97% efficient at catching the 0.3 micron particles, um, in essence, making it a HEPA rated um, fume extraction system. So I just wanted to throw that out there to you guys. Uh, we have both options available. Um, what other thing? Oh, the other thing is uh, I see. I also see with the FA430s in particular, when I go ahead and check these units at customer um, accounts, I see uh, gloves in there, for example. I see pieces of paper. Um, I end up seeing some Kim wipes, some small components in there. Um, so that's why it's, it's always good to make it a habit again for these maintenance procedures. Try to keep up on it, check them, you know, once a week. Open up the lid, make sure you don't have, you know, gloves. You're not sucking up gloves or paper or Kim wipes. Um, again, to try to make these tools, try to get the best out of these tools. Um, another option we have available, if we can go back to that camera five, is that we have these debris screens that you can uh, get. These will prevent any type of gloves or papers or Kim wipes for entering into the nozzle and down into the filter section of your, of your tool. So this is a nice option to have. Um, while I'm on this, I'm gonna go ahead and mention that the, the circular nozzle that we have, that I have here, th these are meant to be uh, placed above your work area and this rectangle a nozzle that I have here. These are more meant to be placed on top of your workbench. Just wanted to throw that out there to you guys. Okay. Um, again, uh, the procedures are basic, simple. It's just the matter of trying to keep up with them, making it a habit uh, to make your tools, uh, to get the most out of your tools. 
Uh, if you do keep up with the maintenance procedures, whether it's your soldering irons, desoldering tools, or your fume extractors, uh, these tools will last you a very long time and they'll wor work like a champ. Okay? Um, that's it. Um, at this point, I guess I'll, I'll take some questions if there are any. Leo asks, is there another FA430 filter that eliminates or reduces strong orders? If so, does that filter increase the FA430 duty cycle? And what is the part number? Uh, we do have a separate carbon filter. Uh, for the FA430, it's part of the, it's, it's a separate main filter that you can purchase. Um, sorry, I don't have that part number off the top of my head. I can get that back to you after the show. I'll look that up and get back to the show. But yes, we do have a separate um, filter that eliminates more of the uh, smell. I hope I got all of the questions. Thanks for your question. Stay safe, Lev. Uh, any other questions? Um, if you can use it for laser engravings, um, I, you can use it for laser engravings. What you cannot use it, use these filters on are like uh, flammable gases, flammable uh, vapors. Um, and that's only because uh, the parts, the internal parts, they, these were meant for solder smoke, to capture solder smoke. They weren't meant to capture any type of flammable gases or uh, vapors. So um, don't use it for that. Laser engraving smokes. Uh, you can use them um, if if the pre-filters are going out after what 15 minutes you said then that's just that's just uh, the life of the pre-filters and you just have to replace your pre-filters that much more um, frequently to keep up with your maintenance procedures thank you summer and uh, let's see I think I got time for one more question Mike asks does the lock line hose provide the same vacuum as the standard hose the lock line hose provides the same vacuum as the standard hose. Uh, the lock line hose does provide the same vacuum as the standard hose, yes. Um, that's all the time for the questions that I have now for today's episode. Um, again, this is the last part of the maintenance series, the three-part series. Uh, we did first part on tip maintenance. We did desolder maintenance. And then now we did a fume extractor maintenance. Uh, but again, the important thing uh, tinning your tips again, cleaning out your nozzles, replacing your filters. Those are just important uh, maintenance procedures. Make it a habit um, to k try to make sure your tools are, get you're getting the most out of your tools. Okay, make it a habit. Uh, if you watched all three series, if you watched today's episode only, um, I appreciate it. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Um, these uh, webinars would not be, I wouldn't be able to do them without you guys, without the audience. So I really appreciate you guys' uh, participation. Um, and also I hope everyone out there, again, uh, I hope you guys are staying safe and uh, staying healthy. Again, thanks for watching. And remember, keep your eye on Hako. Thank you.